hi, welcome to another sneak peek Saturday um, at the Alameda Free Library. Um, this Saturday, I'll be reading another nonfiction book, and I'm very excited to um, present it. It's uh, called Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams by Matthew Walker. Um, I saw this book the first time when it was recommended by uh, Bill Gates. Uh, I believe it was either on his summer list or his um, Christmas list, something like this. So I've been wanting to read it for a very long time. Um, and I hope you uh, find it interesting as well. So as always, I'm going to start reading with um, the flap in the, in the beginning so you have an idea what the book is about. And then I'm going to read you the first chapter. Sleep is one of the most important but least understood aspects of our lives, wellness, and longevity. Until, until very recently, science had no answer to the questions of why we sleep, how it aids our bodies and brains, or why we suffer such devastating health consequences when we don't, especially as compared with our other basic drives eating, drinking, and reproducing, the purpose of sleep remained elusive for many years. But an explosion of scientific discoveries in the last two decades has shed new light on the subject. Now, preeminent neuroscientist and sleep expert Matthew Walker gives us a new understanding of the vital importance of sleep and dreaming among many other functions, sleep enhances our ability to learn, memorize, and make logical decisions. It recalibrates our emotions, restocks our immune system, system fine-tunes our metabolism, and regulates our appetite. Dreaming mollifies painful memories and creates a virtual reality space in which the brain melts past and present knowledge to inspire creativity. Walker answers important questions about sleep. How do caffeine and alcohol affect sleep? What really happens during REM sleep? And why do our sleep patterns change across a lifetime? Alrighty, so chapter one, and we have, uh, a table of contents it's very useful if you want to read only certain aspects of the book and we're going to start with the first chapter which is called this thing called sleep to sleep do you think you got enough sleep this past week can you recall the last time you woke up without an alarm clock, feeling refreshed, not needing caffeine? If the answer to either of these questions is no, you are not alone. More than a third of adults in many developed nations fail to obtain the recommended seven to nine hours of nightly sleep. Excuse me. I doubt you are surprised by this fact, but you may be surprised by the consequences. Routinely sleeping less than six hours a night weakens your immune system, substantially increasing your risk of certain forms of cancer. Insufficient sleep appears to be a key lifestyle factor linked to your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Inadequate sleep, even moderate reductions for just one week, disrupts blood sugar levels so profoundly that you will be, would be classified as pre-diabetic. Short sleeping increases the likelihood of your coro cor coronary arteries becoming blocked and brittle, setting you on a path f toward cardiovascular disease, stroke, and congestive heart failure. Fitting Charlotte Bronte's prophetic wisdom that a ruffled mind makes a restless pillow sleep disruption further contributes to all major psychiatric conditions including depression anxiety and suicidality perhaps you have also noticed a desire to eat more when you are tired 
This is no coincidence. Too little sleep swells concentrations of a hormone that makes you feel hungry while suppressing a companion hormone that otherwise signals food satisfaction. Despite being full, you still want to eat more. It's a proven recipe for weight gain in, in sleep deficient adults and children alike. Worse, should you attempt to diet but don't get enough sleep while doing so, it is futile since most of the weight you lose will come from lean body mass, not fat. Add the above health consequences up and a proven link becomes easier to accept. Relative to the recommended seven to nine hours, the shorter you sleep, the shorter your lifespan. The old maxim, I sleep when I'm dead, is therefore unfortunate. <laughs> Adopt this mindset and it is possible that you will be dead sooner and the quality of that shorter life will be worse. The elastic band of sleep deprivation can stretch only so far before it snaps. Sadly, human beings are in fact the only species that would deliberately deprive themselves of sleep without legitimate gain. Numerous components of wellness and countless seams of societal fabric are being eroded by our costly state of sleep neglect, human and financial alike. So much so that the Center of Disease Control declared insufficient sleep as a public health epidemic. It may not be a coincidence that countries where sleep time was declined uh, de sorry, where sleep time has declined most dramatically over the past century, such as the US, the UK, Japan, Japan and South Korea, and several, and several in Western Europe, are those suffering the greatest increase in rates of the aforementioned physical diseases and mental disorders. Scientists scientists such as myself have even started lobbying doctors to start prescribing sleep. As medical advice goes, it's perhaps the most painless and enjoyable to follow. Do not, however, mistake this as a plea to doctors to start prescribing more sleeping pills. Quite the opposite. In fact, considering the evidence surrounding the deleterious health consequences of these drugs. But can we go so far as to say that a lack of sleep can kill you outright? Quite possibly, on at least two counts. First, there is, very rare genetic dis there is a very rare genetic disorder that starts with a progressive insomnia emerging in midlife. Several months into the disease course, the patient stops sleeping altogether. By this stage, they have started to lose many basic brain and body functions. Few drugs that we currently have will help the patient sleep. After 12 to 18 months of no sleep, the patient will die. Second is the, is the deadly circumstance of getting behind the wheel of a motor vehicle without having had sufficient sleep. Drowsy driving is the cause of hundreds of thousands of traffic accidents and fatalities each year. And here it is not only the life of the sleep deprived individuals that is at risk, but the lives of those around them. Tragically, one person dies in a traffic accident every hour in the United States due to fatigue-related error. And that is only fatigue-related error. Society's ap ap apathy towards sleep has in part been caused by, by the historic failure of science to explain why we need it. Sleep remained one of the last great biological mysteries. All of the mighty problem-solving methods in science. Genetics, molec molecular biology, and high-power digital technology have been unable to unlock the stubborn vault of sleep. Minds of the most string stringent kind, including Nobel Prize winner Francis Crick, who deducted the twisted ladder structure of DNA, famed Roman educator and with Rhetorician Quintilian and even Sigmund Freud, Freud had, uh, had all tried their hand at deciphering sleep's enigmatic code all in vain. 
To better frame this state of prior scientific ignorance, imagine the birth of your first child. At the hospital, the doctor enters the room and says, congratulations, it's a healthy baby boy. We've completed all the preliminary tests and everything looks good. She smiles reassuringly and starts walking towards the door. However, before exiting the room, she turns around and says, there's just one thing. From this moment forth and for the rest of your child's entire life, he will be repeatedly and, re and routinely lapsed into a state of apparent coma. It might even resemble death at times. And while his body lies still, his mind will often be filled with stunning, bizarre halluc hallucinations. This state will consume one third of his life and I have absolutely no idea why he'll do it or what it is good for. Good luck. Astonishing. But until very recently, this was reality. Doctors and scientists could not give you a consistent or complete answer as to why we sleep. Consider that we have known the, function of the, the functions of the three other basic drives in life, to eat, to drink, to, and to reproduce. For many tens, if not hundreds of years now, yet the fourth main biological drive common across the animal kingdom, the drive to sleep, has continued to elude science for millennia. Addressing the question of why we sleep from an evolutionary perspective only compounds the mystery. No matter what vantage point you take, sleep would appear to be the most foolish of biological phenomena. When you are asleep, you cannot gather food, you cannot socialize, you cannot find a mate and reproduce, you cannot nurture or protect your offspring. Worse still, sleep leaves you vulnerable to predation. Sleep is surely one of the most puzzling of all human behaviors. On any one of these grounds, never mind all of them in combination, there are out to have been a strong evolutionary pressure to prevent the emergence of sleep or anything remotely like it. As one sleep scientist had, has said, if sleep does not serve an absolutely vital function, then it is the biggest mistake the evolutionary process has ever made. Yet sleep has persisted, heroically so. Indeed, every animal, specify, any, every animal species carefully studied to date sleeps. This suggests that sleep evolved with or very soon after life itself on our planet. Moreover, the subsequent perseverance of sleep throughout evolution means there must be tremendous benefits that far outweigh all of the obvious hazards and detriments. Ultimately asking, why do we sleep, was the wrong question. It implied there was a single function, one holy grail of reason that we slept and we went in search of it. Theories range from the logical, a time for conserving energy, to the peculiar, an opportunity for eyeball oxygenation, to the psychoanalytic, a non-conscious state in which we fulfill repressed wishes. This book will, re will reveal a very different truth. Sleep is infinitely more complex, profoundly more interesting and strikingly health relevant. We sleep for a rich litany of functions, plural, an abundant constellation of nighttime benefits that service both our brains and our bodies. There does not seem to be one major organ within the body or process within the brain that is, isn't optimally enhanced, enhanced by sleep and detrim, detrimentally impaired when we don't get enough. That we receive such a bounty of health benefits each night should not be surprising. After all, we are awake for two thirds of our lives and we don't just achieve one useful thing during that stretch of time. We accomplish myriad, myriad undertakings that promote our own well-being and survival. Why then would we expect sleep? And that, 
25 to 20 and uh, to 30 years, an average it takes from our lives to offer one function only. Through an explosion of discoveries over the past 20 years, we have come to realize that evolution did not make a spe spectacular blunder in conceiving of sleep. Sleep dispenses a multitude of health insuring benefits. Used to pick up and repeat prescription every 24 hours, should you choose. Within the brain, sleep enriches a diversity of functions, including our ability to learn, memorize, and make logical decisions and choices, benevolently serv servicing our psychological health. Sleep recalibrates our emotional brain circuits, allowing us to navigate next day social and psychological challenges with cool-headed composure. We are even beginning to understand the most impervious and controversial of all conscious experiences, the dream. Dreaming provides a unique suit of benefits to all species fortunate enough to experience it, humans included. Among these gifts are a consoling neurochemical bath that mollifies painful memories and a virtual reality space in which the brain melts past Uh, and present knowledge inspiring creativity downstairs in the body in the body sleep restocks the armory of our immune system preventing infection and warding off all manner of sickness sleep reforms the body's metabolic state by fine-tuning the balance of insulin and circulating glucose sleep further regulates our appetite helping control body weight through healthy food selection rather than rash impulsivity Plentiful sleep maintains a flourishing microbiome within your gut from which we know so much of our nutritional health begins. Adequate sleep is in intimately tied to the fitness of our cardiovascular system, lowering blood pressure while helping keep our hearts in fine condition. And this is where I'm going to stop for today. We still have a couple pages left for the first chapter, but this is a start. Again, the book is called Why We Sleep, and it is uh, by Matthew Walker. You can go to our catalog and place a hold on it. If you would like to borrow the book, give us a call um, and when you're ready to come pick it up. And I hope you enjoyed the reading and you will enjoy the book, and uh, I'll see you next Saturday. Thanks for listening. Bye.